Greetings, everybody. So, uh, in this very short video, uh, I will present to you uh, a recent development from uh, one of our papers published uh, in a book chapter in Springer. Actually, this is this book right here, Cybersecurity. And in the description of this video, I'm going to put a link to this book, uh, to the specific chapter that we have, and also uh, a MATLAB code for you to be able to run your own uh, graphical user interface. So uh, what we did in that paper was to develop uh, a chaos-based encryption technique that consisted of uh, multiple levels uh, of shuffling the bits of an image. And then we accompanied this with an exclusive or operation for substitution, right? And uh, this application, this encryption method was then developed into a graphical user interface by our colleague here, Johannes Kafejis. And uh, this is the GUI right here. I'm gonna put a link to the code in the description, so everybody can download it and run it. So the GUI pretty much uh, runs independently the whole process, and we can, you know, control the uh, design interactively, and we can control the process interactively. So uh, how does it work? Uh, we begin by simply loading an image. Okay, let's say I want to encrypt the classic papers, and we only have to choose encrypt and save key. Now, uh, the methodology presented here is one of the so-called plain text dependent techniques. What does this mean? Uh, this means that we don't define the key ourselves, but uh, the keys are computed by the methodology based on the input image, okay, the plain text. So what it does, uh, the algorithm takes and reads the input image, okay, and based on the input image, it computes the keys used for encryption, okay, and then based on those keys, uh, they are fed in the, into the chaotic maps and the whole encryption process continues, right? So uh, once this whole process is completed, as you see right here, uh, it gives me the option to save the, the secret keys. So I'm going to save them uh, in a TXT file called keys, right? And of course, I'm also going to save uh, the image. So the encrypted version of the papers is printed right here. Of course, it makes absolutely no sense. So now I'm going to save it into a file. Let's uh, call it ciphertext. Okay, nice. So now what I can do is this. I can actually uh, send uh, this encrypted image through a public channel to a person that I want to save it with. And of course, using a safe channel, I can also transmit the secret keys, right? So let's close the GUI and show the process from the beginning. Okay, so let's now uh, say that I'm the receiver of the information. Okay, and uh, I have received this uh, secret encrypted image, and I also, through a secure channel, I have obtained the secret keys. So how, what do I do? I load the image. Okay, let's load the ciphertext, right? And now what I'm going to do is to load the decryption key. So I'm going to load the secret keys, right? And once I load the keys, I only need to click on uh, decrypt. Okay, so now the code reads the secret keys and start internally reversing the whole process. And as you know, uh, when decrypting an image, we start from the final operation that we performed and we reverse each uh, operation individually until we finally obtain the original uh, plain text image, right? And that's what the algorithm does right now. Uh, I also need to note that in newer versions of this algorithm, maybe I will upload it as well on MATLAB Central, I will have significantly increased the speed. I mean, like, it now runs on the 10% uh, of the original speed, so the process now takes less than a second. But here, this is the older version, uh, so it takes a little bit more time. So uh, once, of course, the process is reversed, uh, on the resulting image, we are going to see uh, the original uh, peppers. Okay, so uh, this is how the GUI works. It is very simple. Okay, this is the result. Nicely, we see that obviously the decryption works fine because we obtained the original image. And uh, I would suggest you read the paper in order to understand the process. It is very simple, but it consists of several steps. And uh, you can download this GUI and play for yourself, right? So simple as that, uh, you can make your own modifications and feel free to make any changes that you like because the code is open access, right? So thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.